Smash the state. Government. That's my stance and I'm sticking to it. This isn't the 18th century anymore. I mean, like, communication's getting better every day. Why do we have sovereign states still? Why can't the states manage to organise some national road rules? Like, why can't the states get together and have uh, a national system of education? Most importantly, why, why can't the states get together and, and get some proper names for tap beer? I mean, like, pots and middies and, and ponies and schooners and pints. It's just some sort of metric imperial madness. It's, it's causing many interstate travellers embarrassment and mild inconvenience on a daily basis. And that has to stop. How important are state governments anyway? I mean, Tasmania's got, what, 300,000 people in it? I mean, what, what have they possibly got to organise? I've been to bigger parties. Forget about how irrelevant they are. Like uh, Michael Costa was saying the other day about how we should abolish them because they're because they're morally corrupt. Of course they're morally corrupt. It's like it's like every other industry. You know, the world expanded so quickly in the last hundred years that the business just blossomed with uh, with bureaucracy and uh, benign middle management positions. They're just bullshit jobs that were made up to make sure that the, this skyrocketing population were busy enough not to realise the futility of their existence. I mean, government's a perfect example of that. You know, there's this endless strata of, uh, of diversion and, uh, and delegation. There's team leaders who have team leaders for their team leaders. You know, there's a whole arm of the government devoted to having people walking around quickly just so it looks like there's stuff actually happening there. And it's all completely changed the purpose of a politician. I mean, their job is not actually to look after health and welfare and education. Their job is to get elected, uh, which is like, have a job. And they get that job by convincing the voting public that they're actually going to be able to do things about health and welfare and education, which they can't. Or can they? They can't. Or can they? They're just filling a job that needs to be filled to create this illusion of democracy. And they do their jobs by, by just tacking band-aids on the problems of health and welfare and education. I mean, is that actually serving the public good? Does anyone actually serve the public good? This may sound like a bunch of pinko communist propaganda, but the one thing that does serve the public good better than anything else, that's sacrifice. You know, sacrifice on all levels. You shouldn't get that job doing uh, what you love. You should get the job that needs doing, damn it. You know, don't get that dream house. What you should do is, is get yourself some environmentally sustainable hovel and, and then just curl up in a little ball and stink there, you know? You know, what about the ultimate sacrifice, human sacrifice? The, the world is, is grossly overpopulated. Why don't you just take one for the country and uh, go kill yourself? So, should we be sacrificing the state government because they've lied to us? Like, just because they've clogged up the system with, with infighting? Well, if it's the system that's corrupt, then we'll have to also sacrifice the local and the federal level governments. I mean, um, aren't they have this, exactly the same system built on farce and fallacy? Fallacy and farce? That only seems fair, but I mean, are we really ready for that? I mean, I'm talking about radical social overhaul, not just the kind that you hear about from, from greasy haired undergraduates. This is serious stuff. Are we really ready for that? No, you wouldn't be interested. Why don't you go home and play with your iPhone?